As you can see, and you're looking at this lamp, this is a cool little job, but it has to be clean and it is in dire need. So what we're gonna do is we're spraying this down and we're gonna let it set. Hi everybody, I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the, the streeters. streeters. Welcome to the RDRV channel where we teach, share, and learn all about glass. That's right, Barb, and this week we have a special episode where we're gonna take 10 easy steps to repairing a stained glass window. And at the end of this video, stick around, I'm gonna show you a really interesting tool to work with lamps with, and also give you a secret to keeping your copper foil work from oxidizing. I know uh, some of you have written in and said you're having problems with that. So we're gonna cure that problem today at the end of the video too. Barb, I think we need to go to the studio and get to work. I think so, let's go. let's go. Because just like anything else that you work on, car, engine, motorcycle, whatever, you know, you want it clean. This is one of many sizes that patterns were made for a while. They were real popular back in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. I say as far back, as far back as the 60s. So, you know, years ago, we used to repair these and we would, uh, we would actually slump the fruits because they weren't available. Now they're available, but you can't just buy one at a time. You have to buy a set. So the customer for this lamp here, we're just gonna put a piece in, but we're not gonna do a slump. I'll spin this around for you here down inside this ring which is what holds the the top of the lamp to. and now this is just regular glass cleaner and we're gonna rinse it look at the dirt coming off we're gonna get this over to a dry table finish cleaning it up and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna repair the piece don't go away okay everybody so we just finished step one bring the lamp onto the table spray it down and get 50 years of dirt off of this bad boy. So anyway, here we go. We're gonna take it over to the table now where we're gonna actually fix this open area that used to be a pair. Okay, so now that we have step one complete, step two is take a look at the glass because we are replacing a pair. A long time ago, Barbara and I, when we repaired these, we would actually make these fruits. So we kind of knew what the glass was that we were looking for. So over here in our rack, we're looking for a grass green and amber opalescent with white in it. So we're gonna look over here and we're gonna pull this glass right here out. So I'm not gonna put a lot of light behind it because when I turn around and you see this, this is the glass that we'll be using to replace this pair. Step two is now complete. Step three coming right up. Step three would be to actually clean out the opening where the old glass was, make sure there's no broken glass, and get it ready to make your pattern. Step four coming up. Anyway, so step four, guess what? We've got our opening cleaned out. Step three, the lamp is really clean, and Barbara's just gonna show you just how clean it is later on in the video. So we need uh, just a piece of paper, our Sharpie, and we have our opening cleaned out. I'm gonna hold the back of my hand up here, like this, and I'm gonna trace around this opening. Now, you can say this is two things. If I put an eye, a eye here and an eye here, it's somebody's nose, but this is our pair. That'll be, that'll be edited, I can have fun. You know, it's really nice. What I do for a living, and those of you that do this just to, even as a hobby, you know how relaxing it really is and how much fun it can be. Or using just regular shears here, regular scissors, to cut this pattern of this pear out. And it's okay if it's a little bit big because we're gonna grind it anyway. I wanna cut it. The, the way I traced it is how I'm cutting it the first time. And then we'll work down. Funny, I do a lot of things left-handed and I do a lot of things right-handed. This is one of the things I do right-handed. So. Anyway, so this is our pattern. Great, folks, we'll see you next week. No. So this is our pattern, and you can see, this is a great way to test it, just to see if your glass is gonna be close. Sure, Barbara. So this is a great way to test it, and because we have the crown off, 
we can actually lift this up and show you what's going on. So we are going to trace this out onto our pear colored glass. And believe it or not, guys, even though this pear isn't going to be bent, when you look at this lamp, you're not going to be able to tell well, which one's bent and which one's not. So this is a great way to repair, keep your customer's cost way down. Those of you that make molds, you know how much it costs to just make a mold for you, how long it takes and how much it costs for you to make a mold of a little simple pair. So here we are. This is step five. Step four, we make our pattern. We make sure that it fits in our opening. And now we're gonna remove this. And remember, the side that your black line on is the top. So we're gonna find a really pretty piece of this glass. I'm leaning towards this right here. And they kinda, it doesn't really matter how things are turned on this, because you can see this is running this way. Some of these are running, this one's running this way. These pairs over here are running vertical. So you know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna have fun with this pair. We're gonna trace this. So stick around as well because I have a really cool to tool to show you for working with lamps to add to your tool arsenal if they're still in business. If they're not, you can kind of look at it and probably build one yourself because it, it is really an awesome piece of equipment for your tool arsenal. I'm getting my glass cutter out and I'm gonna do one of the hardest lines to make. That hard line is a straight line. Now, you heard that. I kept the same amount of pressure all the way across, but I want you, I think Barbara can get that. When you look along the edge of this glass, you see the colors are stacked up. You see the green, the amber, the white. As these color, white is a very, uh, it's, it's a stiff color. It's a very stiff. So when you go across that, and you listen to that glass cutter now, you know that Ed keeps the same amount of pressure. But I want Barbara to bring the microphone over here and just listen to this. Same amount of pressure. Same amount of pressure. Okay. If it wasn't the same amount of pressure, it wouldn't cut. But when you don't hear it, don't get scared. Keep the same amount of pressure. I can't really express that enough to you. If you're having trouble cutting glass, usually it's because you're letting up and down, not keeping the same constant pressure. Kind of like, think of, think of your hand as your foot on the gas pedal. And go 60 miles an hour, not 63, not 58. Your glass will come out a lot better in the long run. I'm here to help you, okay? Here we go, step six. I know I said it again. So we've got our, our glass here. Kind of, it looks just like a pear if you ask me. <laughs> and the color matches exactly. It's always nice when you can do a repair job for your customer and that you can get the glass, you know, identical. It's really, you know, sometimes you can only get it close. But if you get it close enough, it's all good. We dry fitted this piece of glass into our lamp and it looks really good. So now, and y'all can steal the way I copper foil because I'm always looking at my glass. I'm always centering it. And you can do this left or right handed, watching Mike and Molly, Mark whatever, and Mork and Mindy, anybody you wanna watch, do this in your living room, do this in the confines of your sweet home. Okay. Had a little piece on there that we just really needed to get rid of. So I'm gonna turn the lamp now towards me so that I can see what I'm doing. Well, the good thing about this lamp, and I'll, I'll show it, is that, is that we have flat sides on it. So normally if you're working on a lamp, you have to put it in a box, cushion it to make it the angle that you want to work on it. So this being a hanging lamp, it's a little bit different. And now that we have our piece in there, I've got my soldering iron on, and now we're getting ready to solder. So we fitted the glass after we copper foiled it, and now we, I wanna tack it in place. And keep in mind, when you're soldering these old lamps and stuff, this, uh, there we go. The old solder, because you don't know what it is, so you don't, just work it a little bit hotter, that's all. Just work it a little bit hotter. That's all you need to do. So we're just trying, 
now it's it's in there. We don't have to worry about anything falling out on it. So I'm just gonna take this and we're gonna turn it around and we're gonna try and keep this as vertical as we can while we're soldering, okay? So let's melt the solder up here. So this old solder's got a chemical on it. So I'm gonna let my ruby flux do what it's supposed to, which is just eat that stuff up. See that? that? It's probably a wax over top of a patina. Yep, to keep it from oxidizing. And you know, it hasn't oxidized in all these years. Now y'all probably in the camera seeing some stuff drop through and that's, that's just normal. That stuff will just come right off. Hi everybody, welcome back. This is step nine. We've got the pair attached to the inside. We've got it soldered. And now we're gonna put our black patina on it and blend it in with the rest of the lamp itself. Okay, so this is just our black patina. Everybody, you have this in your, I hope in your chemical arsenal. So we're gonna take this and we're just gonna, we're just gonna black patina it these you know you can tell this this lamp was pretty sure it was homemade and whoever did it did a really excellent job it's okay everybody you know um barb did check these people out and they're no longer in business so i'm going to scoot this lamp out of the way i'm going to let you look at this and i'm going to turn it very slow so you can kind of see it okay it's a very simple prod a uh, little wood project, but man, it's going to do its trick. What happens is this is anchored to your work surface. By loosening this clamp here, this arm articulates. By loosening this clamp here, this arm articulates. So my, no matter what you're doing with your lamp, you can always position it to where you're working perfectly straight and your solder will flow very nicely. So as you can see, I can adjust this, this, the angle on this. So now I'm soldering and this is perfectly level and it'll do multiple positions. So this is my contortionist lamp fixer. This tool right here gets a bell from Ed for his toolbox. I love it. Okay, everybody. So, hey, I hope you learned a lot during that video. Here's our tip about keeping your stained glass projects from oxidizing. And this is it. Any liquid car wax, as long as you follow the directions on the back of the bottle, apply your liquid car wax as, a as to the directions, allow it to dry, and then you'll polish it off. This lamp right here in front of me was probably waxed 15 years ago. And it is still, honestly, it's still slick to the touch and there is absolutely no oxidation on it. So just remember, your oxidation problem stops with a liquid car wax, applying it like the directions say, buffing it off, polishing it out, you'll never have another problem with oxidation on your work. So hi everybody, this was this week's project. This is one of my favorite tools to work with. I wanna thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed what you've seen today on our video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. So don't forget, if you have any questions, put them in the box below. Thumbs up and ring that bell. Ring that bell. Thank you.